Hello there, guys, and let's talk about mistakes. I make mistakes. You make mistakes. We all make mistakes. We all have created theories that at the time sounded correct, when reality was much different. And in no field of science are mistakes more prevalent than in paleontology, the study of life that once existed. Countless times we have dug up the fossils of a beast and imagined what it would look like in the flesh. And these imaginations are never completely correct. Paleontologists call these speculations reconstructions, or the examination and recreation of once living organisms, as well as the theories on how it looked, acted, and lived. Today, we will examine the top 13 most outlandish, most inaccurate, and most outdated reconstructions in paleontology. We all know Tyrannosaurus rex, the famous large predatory dinosaur that was featured in Jurassic Park. Well, a long time ago, Tyrannosaurus rex was originally reconstructed to look like a giant lizard kangaroo hybrid, dragging a long tail on the ground. All dinosaurs discovered in the early 20th century appeared like this. The early paleontologists speculated that dinosaurs were a mix between a kangaroo and lizard in posture. These outdated dinosaur reconstructions had long lizard-like tails that dragged on the ground like a kangaroo's. These dinosaurs also had tall erect backs, like a person's, appearing more humanoid in posture than what they actually were like. These kangaroo dinosaur designs were later changed to the more horizontal and bird-like designs of modern day. During the 1950s, still little was known about dinosaurs. Still having kangaroo postures and reptilian scales, dinosaurs would still have another 20 years before the dinosaur renaissance. In 1954, one famous dinosaur discovery led to a reconstruction that was very far from the truth. Therizinosaurus was one of the strangest dinosaurs yet discovered, having massive claws the length of a man. When Russian paleontologist Yevgeny Maliev examined the fossilized claws of this dinosaur, he thought they belonged to a large diving turtle like reptile, 45 meters long, that used the claws to harvest seaweed. This giant turtle idea was eventually proven incorrect as paleontologists in 1970 identified the giant claws as dinosaur, belonging to a bipedal dinosaur that was a distant relative of Tyrannosaurus. It would be another 20 years until Therizinosaurus would be properly identified as herbivore and feathered. Woolly mammoths were one of the last great megafauna that roamed the earth, surviving long enough to see and be hunted to extinction by early humans. After they died out, these magnificent beasts were forgotten by humanity, until reports from Siberia in the 1690s spoke of large skeletal remains across the landscape. These skeletons sparked interest from early paleontologists. In 1728, Sir Hans Salone published what can be considered the first scientific paper on mammoths. Salone's paper was based on travelers' descriptions and a few scattered bones collected in Siberia and Britain. While he discussed the question of whether or not the mammoth was an elephant, he went, hmm, whatever, and drew no conclusions. Soon, more and more remains were discovered and paleontologists ended up with this thing. A warthog-like inaccurate interpretation of this Ice Age elephant relative. Probably the most recent and most controversial of these inaccurate reconstructions, the featherless dinosaurs. The discovery of feathers on dinosaurs such as tyrannosaurs, raptors, and other species of dinosaur has been a revolutionary change for all dinosaur reconstructions. Before we had feathered tyrannosaurus on the cover of this month's Scientific American, we had these naked dinosaurs that came right out of Jurassic Park. Now a dinosaur once thought to be covered in thick scales has fluffy feathers. During the 90s, many feathered dinosaurs were discovered, changing all prior reconstructions. This change can definitely be seen in school textbooks, featuring outdated depictions of featherless oviraptors and velociraptors. These incorrect reconstructions of scaling and naked dinosaurs are ones that do not seem to die out anytime soon. Many dinosaurs are still depicted featherless, even when evidence of feathers on the same dinosaurs have been discovered. It all started in 1965 when two long arms belonging to a yet-to-be-discovered dinosaur were found in Mongolia. 
The arms were massive, longer than a man, meaning the owner was big. The owner of the arms was given the name Dino Chiris, or Horrible Hand. The original reconstructions pictured a massive featherless theropod dinosaur using its giant claws to catch unfortunate prey. It wasn't until recently that the true appearance of the owner of the horrible hands was revealed. In 2014, the same tragic year of New Spinosaurus, a pair of different Dinocheirus fossils were discovered. The new evidence collected of Dinocheirus was vastly different to its original retro reconstruction. New Dinocheirus had feathers, a humpback, and a duck-like head. As it turns out, Dinocheirus was not a predator, but an omnivore using its large arms to either protect itself or to reach tall branches for food. Pterosaurs were flying reptiles that inhabited the earth during the reign of the dinosaurs. After their extinction, the first fossilized remains of a pterosaur came to light in the late 18th century with the discovery of pterodactyls. The creature had a bird-like snout with tiny teeth and a long fourth finger. In 1800, the first reconstruction of this pterosaur came to light. German and French scientist Johann Hermann speculated that pterodactyl was a type of flying marsupial with an extended fourth finger that would connect the wrist to the ankle forming a bat-like wing membrane. Covered in fur, this mammalian pterosaur would later be discovered to be a reptile and not a marsupial at all. After the more infamous marsupial pterosaur reconstruction, several other scientists created more incorrect reconstructions. A bat-like reconstruction in 1817 in Newman's flying possum, but by far the most inaccurate was Johann Wagler's, which was the polar opposite of his peers' theories. In one of his published works, Johann speculated that pterodactyl used its wings as flippers to, and swam the open ocean like a turtle. Wagler went so far to classify pterodactyls along with other aquatic invertebrates such as plesiosaurs. We now know that Wagler's reconstructions are far from the truth and pterosaurs used their wings to fly. The very iconic dinosaur, Stegosaurus, is definitely a very peculiar and abnormal creature. And it's no surprise there have been countless inaccurate reconstructions of this dinosaur. One of the most far from the truth is O.C. Marsh and his team's reconstruction in, in 1884. His tripod stegosaurus reconstruction also took elements from the kangaroo tail dragging, as did most reconstructions at the time. But his reconstruction took it to a step further. Marsh believed that stegosaurus had an additional brain at the base of the tail, due to the dinosaur having such a small brain case inside the skull. This inaccurate concept caught on and has become a myth often featured in pop culture referenced in Ray Bradbury's short story, A Sound of Thunder. Elasmosaurus was a giant, long-necked aquatic reptile that used its long neck to catch fish. When Elasmosaurus was discovered by E.D. Cope's team in 1868, the bones were reassembled by Cope. Previously an expert on lizards, which regularly have short necks and long tails, Cope reconstructed the newly discovered creature with its head placed on what we now know to be the tail, the short end. Cope put the head of Elasmosaurus on the wrong end of the body, causing the reconstruction of Elasmosaurus to have a short neck and a long tail, something we now know to be quite the opposite. Well, let's talk about Brontosaurus. I was going to talk about how Brontosaurus never existed and it was a misidentified adaposaur, but guess who's back in paleontology? Brontosaurus. Well, Brontosaurus was a giant sauropod dinosaur and was by far one of the heaviest creatures ever to walk the earth. Early paleontologists noticed this and believed the dinosaur was simply too heavy to support its weight on land. To solve this, early paleontologist theories believe that Brontosaurus and other large sauropods lived exclusively in water and in swaps. One idea even going so far to say that they were fully aquatic and spent their whole lives underwater. This reconstruction has been proven false, as we now know that sauropods lived on land and, and could support their enormous weight. The Mosasaur is a giant aquatic reptile related to today's monitor lizards. Mosasaur is featured constantly in pop culture, from the kaiju size to the paddle-tailed sea serpent. 
But even in such variety, there is a common theme, the ocean. Mosasaur is always featured living in the ocean like a reptilian killer whale. So it may be a shock to find out that once upon a time, it was believed that Mosasaur was a land-dwelling reptile and not aquatic at all. In 1789, Mosasaur was reconstructed as a giant monitor lizard. We now know that Mosasaur was clearly a fully aquatic reptile that even had a fish-like tail fluke to help it swim in the ocean. For those that are at least somewhat educated in paleontology, you probably have heard of a man named David Peters. David Peters is an amateur outcast paleontologist that even in our modern day world can't really get a grip of accurate modern paleontology theories. To say that David Peters reconstructions are incorrect is an understatement. It is extremely hard to comment on David Peters reconstructions because they are so outlandish and strange it is hard to understand what is right with these reconstructions. Most of David Peters' reconstructions are of pterosaurs and reptiles related to him on his website, Reptile Evolution, and Pterosaur Heresies. He allegedly sees things inside fossils that no other paleontologist is able to see. He edits the real fossils in Photoshop, adding what he wants to it. He interprets pterosaurs as bipedal, upright walking reptilian monstrosities, with strange amounts of long string-like structures throughout their bodies. Some appearing like anglerfish lures, others appearing like massive extravagant feathers. Peters has a strange knack for finding things that aren't really there. Here's just a few examples of his reconstructions that are extremely far from the truth. Imagine reconstructing the first dinosaur. Imagine finding the remains of a creature with nothing to relate it to. Hard task, isn't it? Well, that was the task of William Buckland. In the mid-1800s, strange bones of a giant creature were discovered in Europe. Buckland had to reconstruct what the owner of the bones would look like. He was indeed the first man recorded to have been given the job of reconstructing the bones of a dinosaur. He gave the creature the name Megalosaurus, or Giant Lizard. He considered Megalosaurus to be quadruped. He thought it was an amphibian, an animal capable of both swimming in the sea and walking on land. Generally, in his mind, Megalosaurus resembled a giant lizard. The same reconstruction was given to the second dinosaur discovered, Iguanodon. The two dinosaurs were believed to be giant lizards with iguana-like scales and sharp crocodile-like teeth. One of Buckland's colleagues even called his Megalosaurus reconstruction a huge lizard. These reconstructions depicted dinosaurs as great dragon-like creatures, similar to the ones featured in ancient Chinese lore. We now know that Buckland's reconstructions are incorrect to say the least. Megalosaurus and Iguanodon are now bird-like bipedal reptiles, and not just massive elephant-sized lizards, Iguanodon actually being a herbivore, in contrast to the previous reconstruction picturing it as a large predator. These extremely incorrect reconstructions are a testament to an old world of paleontology. A monument still stands to this day in the United Kingdom of these incorrect recreations. Crystal Palace Park, created in 1854, still features these weird and outdated dinosaurs, just to show how far we have come. gliding its way into my bonus number is this extremely strange reconstruction that would make even David Peters scoff at its inaccuracy. I have no idea where this came from, but it seems like it comes from an extremely outdated science textbook, featuring an ankylosaurus that glides with squirrel-like wing membranes. Do I even need to say anything about this one? A creature that likely weighed up to 4 tons flying? Alright, that's all the time we have for today. Stay tuned for more top 13 lists like this one. And also stay tuned for the next Paleo Profile episode, which will be out shortly.